In 1996, Rachel entered a competition to design a Holocaust memorial for the city of Vienna. Her idea then was a sort of ghost library, rows of books cast in concrete with their spines turned inwards. Books written, books unwritten, books never able to be written because their authors were murdered. She chose a library, a place of knowledge. And it won. How did you feel? Totally terrifying. Ten people firing questions at me, saying things like, it looks like a bunker. And I was like, really, does it? Oh, I, I didn't realise. You know, knowing full well that that's exactly what I was trying to make, something that was as, as aggressive as that. They needed something aggressive there. If it had been something polite, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. One of the jurors was Simon Wiesenthal, who had spent years campaigning for a Holocaust memorial in Vienna. And he was very proud of what he thought was his young Jewess who was going to be making this Holocaust memorial. And there was this big stack of TV and news people, everyone with cameras, and he had his arm round me. And they said, Rachel, Rachel, are you Jewish? And I said, no. And his arm fell from my side. It was a very male-dominated group of people, and I don't think they had ever quite met somebody like Rachel. This is then set into the prefab structure. You pour around it, and then you just remove the ceiling rows, and no. that way you no. have one on. Sie hat gemeint, dass sie uns also ein Model gibt und wir das dort in den Beton einlegen. The oberfläche dann nur Luftblasen, also das ist unmöglich. It would be a surface full of bubbles. Mm -hmm. This could be made in rubber. Mm -hmm. Often there was a sort of Kafka-esque series of meetings. They just seemed to go on endlessly without decisions being made. I, I mean, you're looking at me as if I'm a kind of mad woman. I, I cast all the time. I've been casting for 10 years in every material you can possibly think of. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> While Rachel held her ground over the technical processes, there were still more obstacles to come. The piece faced opposition from neo-Nazis and Holocaust deniers, but also from the Jewish community in Vienna, who didn't want the sculpture to be built on the site of a former synagogue. By the end of 1996, it didn't seem that the memorial would ever be built. The theme of the book continued to haunt Rachel as she diverted her energy in a new direction. I've been neurotically making book things because I've been able to finish it in Vienna. from start to finish in three months, not three years or 30 years or however long it might take. You know, I just, I just think it's unforgivable how they've um, treated me over there, really. It was exhausting for her. And for quite some time afterwards, even, uh, the word Vienna was filled with dread for her. When, in the summer of 1997, Rachel took on the British Pavilion at the Venice Biennale, she showed a room filled with absent books. Oh. 
It had been five years in the making, but Rachel Whiteread's Holocaust Memorial had finally won over its detractors, including Simon Wiesenthal. Dieses Mahnmal soll nicht schön sein. Es muss uns und anderen wehtun. Ich danke. Right in the heart of the city of Vienna, you have this oasis of calm, of silence, of contemplation, of reflection, and it is completely carried by this memorial. I'm really proud that it's there. It is doing its job very well. But it wasn't a joyful experience. I don't think one should be happy about making something like that. It's a really big deal and it's kind of takes a lot out of you, you know. You just have to be, you know, well emotionally equipped to do something like that. And over the years, I've done my fair share of sculptures that have taken a lot out of me, to be honest, you know, and made me quite un unwell. You know, sort of a bit, bit too sensitive sometimes <laughs> for these things. Yeah, they can leave big scars. <laughs> 